There are three different variations of this cute Santa Cam ornament that you can make. And we're going to be using any one of our Cricut machines, faux leather and iron on to make this adorable little ornament to hang around your house or on your tree, wherever you want to. My name is Kelly Rousseau and let's get clacking. I'm going to start off in Creative Fabrica, where we're going to download the Santa Cam SVG. Now it does come with three of the variations, so we can have the Reindeer Watch, Santa Cam or Elf Watch. And you can hang them up in different places in your house to get good coverage around your house. I'm going to leave a link to this exact design in the description. And if you don't yet have a Creative Fabrica subscription, I would strongly suggest getting one. I use mine all the time and it works out to $5 a month. And I will leave a link down below to where you can get the deal for $5 a month. It is so worth it and I absolutely love mine. I would be lost without my subscription. So I'm just going to click download and then click on the little file once it's downloaded. I'm going to just save the SVG files as those are the ones that I want. And I'm going to extract them and save them to somewhere on my computer that I can find in a moment. Once you've downloaded the files, I'm going to click on new project in Cricut Design Space. And we can then start uploading our designs by clicking upload in the bottom left hand corner. And you can just drag and drop the files here. I already have a Santa Cam pillow, so I'm going to use Reindeer Watch in this example. And once you've selected the file, we can just click upload. I'm then going to select it from my recent uploads and add it to my canvas. Now this is just the main file. We still need to play around with it a little bit to make sure that it'll fit onto a little ornament. So I'm going to decrease the size as I want it to fit on around about a 10 centimeter circle. And we'll play around with the size a little bit more. I'm going to hit shapes and add a circle to my canvas. I'm going to change the size of my circle to be around eight centimeters. And I'm going to right click and send it to the back so that the reindeer watch fits on top of it. And it looks like I've managed to get the sizing absolutely perfect, but if you want to make yours a little bit smaller, you absolutely can. So we'll put the height of reindeer watch at seven centimeters, which is just under three inches. From here, I'm going to add another circle to my canvas and make that one very small. And that's where we're going to hang the ribbon from. So I'm going to make it around 0.5 centimeters and make sure that when I'm adding it onto my actual circle, it's a little bit further away from the edge so that it doesn't tear out. I'm then going to select that circle and the wider circle that we have, and I'm going to hit slice. Now, if you can't hit slice, that's because you have more than one layer selected. So once that has sliced, we can see from the main circle that there is a little hole in the middle, which is exactly what we want. And we can delete those other two smaller ones. I'm going to once again, send the circle to the back so that we can see what we're working with. And I'm going to change the color of that one to white, just to give us a little bit better of an example of what it's going to look like. From here, I need to make sure that all of the layers are attached to each other. So I need to select all of the brown layers, attach those together, and all of the black layers and attach those together as well. So I'm going to do that in the layers panel on the side. And you'll be able to see exactly which layers look brown and which layers look black. So I'm going to individually select all of those. When you're selecting multiple layers, I always recommend starting from the bottom as when you select something, it'll jump to the top of the one that you've selected. So if you start from the top and work your way down, it's going to be very frustrating. And once you have all of the black layers selected, you can move them aside just to make sure that you've got all of the black elements selected. Then I want you to click combine and weld just to make them all into one layer. We're then going to take the brown elements that have been selected now and do exactly the same thing. Combine and weld. And once everything's lined up together, we can see we now only have three elements on the canvas. I'm going to save my project as I've done a little bit of work with it. Before we make the project, we need to make sure that everything is mirrored as we will be cutting everything in reverse. Even the faux leather, I always cut with the front side facing down on the mat. So what I want to do is select everything, click flip and flip horizontal. This saves me a lot of heartache when I go to the next panel as I 
always forget to toggle the mirror button. So now I can see that everything has been mirrored. So it makes my life a little bit easier. And then I'm going to hit make and we can now start cutting everything. I also don't feel like cutting three different mats. I only really need to cut two as the black and the brown HTV are going to be cut on the same mat. So I'm going to navigate to the brown mat, click the three dots on top of the object, click move object, and I'm going to click on the black mat. So I know that I need to put the black on the left hand side of the mat and have the brown on the right hand side. I also see that I need about a three inch square of each of the vinyls and I need about a four inch square of the white faux leather. So from here, I'm going to click continue, connect to my machine and select the material. We aren't going to cut the faux leather just yet. We're going to wait for the next step to get there, but I will be cutting it on the faux leather paper thin setting or with the pressure on more. And once that has finished cutting, I'm going to change the pressure setting for the iron on. I like to cut my iron on on premium vinyl textured metallic just because I know I'm not going to cut through the backing sheet and I like to get a very deep cut with my iron on or my HTV materials. I'm going to be using the Cricut Iron-On Glitter for the back of the faux leather just to provide something a little bit more fun and on the back. I really don't like this on clothing so things like this is the perfect use for me to be able to use up my glitter iron-on. So I'm going to turn my mini press on to 2 and I'm placing the faux leather and the iron-on with the glue side down, placing a Teflon sheet on top and then I'm just going to lightly press it for around 10 to 20 seconds or so in each position to make it stick to the faux leather. I'm then going to let that cool down to one bar because it only needs one bar for the front. And then I'm going to place the faux leather on the surface so that it cools down as well so that we can remove the backing. Once that has cooled, I'm going to peel back the protective sheeting of the glitter. And this is now ready to cut. So I'm going to cut the faux leather first and then I'm going to cut the two iron-ons and then we can assemble everything. And as always, we check the cut before we remove the mat, just to make sure that it has actually cut through and it has. Going to remove the vinyl from the mat and place the protective sheeting back on. Now that everything's been cut, it's time to weed. So we're going to remove the outside of the vinyl. The black layer is super fine. So if you want to do it a little bit bigger, I would say go for it. Or you can just take the letters off entirely and just have the letters in plain brown. I hadn't quite thought this one through in terms of the size, as we can see, it is really, really tiny. And if I'd wanted to go this small, I would have used a lower pressure setting. So I'm just going to remove all of the letters and not have a funny black outline, which is totally okay to pivot mid project and try something different. And now we can get a pretty good feel for what our project is going to look like. So I'm going to place one layer at a time, line it up, place my Teflon sheet over, bring up my mini press so that it is warm on only one bar and place it on the top one for about five, five or 10 seconds. You don't have to give very much pressure. And then I'm going to place it on the bottom one for about five or 10 seconds as well. We're then going to flip it over to remove the heat and slowly peel back the carrier sheets. And we'll line up the second layer, place the Teflon over it, and I'll probably do this one also in two presses, but going the other way. And again, we want to cool it off on a cold surface and remove the carrier sheet. And there we have it. If you enjoy fun faux leather projects like this, my friend Amy Romero is hosting a faux la la event where she covers 40 different faux projects over 20 days. 
each with their own SVG and tutorial on how to put them together. It is an incredible free event that I really hope that you get to take part in. Check the link down in the description for more information and I really hope that you enjoy playing with this project. But if you want to see some of my other Christmas crafts, check out this playlist on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.